feel like this might be a little too low, so let me, oh, now it's too much. Will I edit any of this out? We don't know. We go, hi. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. It's Lindsay Heather Pierce. For those of you who don't know me, I am an actor, singer, uh, mover. <laughs> Never gonna be a dancer, but I'll try my hardest. Um, give me a combination and I will go work on it in my kitchen for days and I'll come back looking like a mover plus, okay? Mm. Um, I'm living in New York and uh, I'm currently performing in an off-Broadway show called Titanic, um, which is a musical high drag parody phenomenon glitter happy experience of the story of the movie Titanic uh, told through the eyes of Celine Dion uh, and sung through with all of her songs, just the best. So if you haven't seen it yet, come on down to the Daryl Roth uh, at Union Square and come see an off-Broadway show that will make you um, need to get your appendix removed. You'll laugh so hard. Um, but that's who I am. Actually, today is September 14th, so I'm filming this on the two-year anniversary of Wicked Reopening, post 18-month shutdown. Yay, Wicked, and it's its 20th anniversary this year. Isn't that wild? 20 years. 20 years of green. 20 years of that lion cub. <laughs> and then monkeys. Um, and that blue, beautiful, glittery dress. Being in, being in this space today, knowing that it's September 14th and two years ago, we were refilling theaters is so amazing and this is not what this video is about but it, it just was something that kind of came to my heart and my mind and um i just wanted to speak on it before getting into anything else because it's the thing that is the most prevalent and the most forward in my, in my brain have no fear do not worry for those of you who are not new here we've got emergency which they say it's orange flavored on the packet it tastes like raspberry looks like raspberry i don't i don't know something happened we've got that we've got water this is my um courtesy of the muni orange <laughs> hydro flask um very fancy thank you for that and jackie burns has the same one at titanic and then i uh, i made that mulgato mul mul i'm saying it wrong i made the fluffy tiktok coffee um because it's good um, with almond milk and I have my tea right here that is too hot currently to drink but it is stewing for maximum gloop for the voice and then I've got a whole other 48 ounces. I pee a lot. Welcome. For those of you who are new, this is me. This is real, this is me. I don't know if I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be but I don't know how to be anywhere else. <laughs> But today, um, the point of today was to do a q and A. I I reached out on my Instagram and said, is there anything that anybody wants to see in my YouTube videos? And you guys had wonderful suggestions. Some things that I'd already thought about and some things that I uh, like had material and stuff for but hadn't thought about how to put it together. Um, so thank you to, to all of you who um, did, did work for me. <laughs> for free. Thank you for that. The next videos will be for you. Um, and if there's anything that you guys do want to see, you just put it down below. Um, I take screenshots of literally everything. Uh, raise your hand in the comments or in the ether with me now if you screenshot everything and then forget that you have and you just have a file on your phone that's just screenshots and it's quite literally thousands of screenshots and then you don't do anything about it because it's overwhelming. Anyway, um, <laughs> But this video is gonna be a Q&A. You guys left me some really beautiful questions. Some are theater related, some are not. Um, so I thought I would just do, do a little Q&A and, and answer some of your questions. I'm not gonna say who asked because I didn't get permission. Um, obviously question box responses. I have to stop swatching. My chiropractor's gonna kill me. I'm sorry, Joe. Um, 
uh, I a lot you know when you when you put hello can I speak when you put a, a, a response in a question box on Instagram um, it's not anonymous but I also don't want to just be like so and so ask this because I don't know if they were just asking privately or not um, and I'm sorry if you see some rainbowy pitter patters of light uh, here and there I have a prism that lives in one of my windows that gets the most Sun and it gives me joy Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. <laughs> yeah, so let's get into it. Had to hold for some beeping of construction vehicles. Okay, first question. What's one, one role you wish to do but haven't? I think you'd be a great Jenna in Waitress, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, you answered my question. Jenna in Waitress is, is a role that I would love to play. I love the show, I love the music. Um, I love shows where the the voices of the performers are just as much a part of the music as the band is and I love how involved the band is um, everyone is just like working together the, the actors are the props as well as the set and it's just amazing um, that was a that's a role that I would love to do in any capacity I love waitress I love Jenna and I really love singing that kind of folky style of music. Um, I wouldn't even really call it folky, and it's not quite country either, but it's softer than anything else that I've I've been singing. Um, and I really love utilizing that part of my voice, and I would love to explore that character. I just find it really inspiring and fascinating, so I would love to play Jenna in Waitress. Um, next question is, would you want to do film and TV again at some point? Of course, I love television and film. Um, that's what I did a lot of in LA when I was living there for I think a little over a decade. And yeah, I absolutely do. It's it's not up to me whether or not I get to. Um, I will continue to audition. Um, SAG after we're on a strike, a writer's strike right now that's gone on for some time and I don't think it's gonna not happen anytime soon. So. Um, yeah, that, that's something I would love to get into when uh, people are being paid what they deserve to be paid. The next question is, what would you be doing if you weren't in theater? I think I've answered this before. Um, when I was young, I really wanted to be, is that a plane? I guess Thursday is just the busiest day um, for my neighborhood. Um, I think I've answered this before. I really wanted to be like Indiana Jones and or uh, Evelyn O'Connell. Um, but I really wanted to be like an archeologist or um, like an anthropologist. But yeah, I think that's what I would really wanna do is some fantastical version of being a historian, <laughs> going on an adventure. That's probably what I would love to do. Let's see, okay. Um, this one's gonna take a second, so let's Let's focus. Top five favorite books. The next question is top five favorite books either of all time or at the moment. I will not be able to do all time because I would really have to sit and think and I'm doing this willy nilly right now. Um, at the moment, my top five books are, um, where is it? Hold on. Okay. At the moment, my top five books right now, in this moment, not of the year, not of all time, just today, um, is The Cloisters by Katie, Katie Hayes, the actual book I've loaned to my best friend slash roommate Tyler. It's somewhere else, but I wanted to keep the sleeve looking as gorgeous as it is. This is incredible. This is set in New York. Um, the Cloisters is a real museum that's uptown. Um, connected to the Met, and it is um, it is about a an art historian student. Um, every it's morally gray characters. Um, they're trying to discover the secrets of um, this ancient tarot deck from the Renaissance, um, and you think that that's what it's completely about, but there's so much else happening. There's murders. There's Schmexies times. There's a lot in here. And it's not that long of a book. Um, but I will say, I thought I knew all the twists and turns. I thought I was figuring things out. 
and I did, the very ending of the book, this is one of this and If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. The endings of these two books quite literally made me go, <gasps> like, <gasps> I, blew my mind. Now, just because I like these things doesn't mean that you will like them, but these are my If You Were Villains, or If We Were Villains, The Cloisters. Hmm. If We Were Villains, if you're a Shakespeare nut like me, that's something. I, to, to be honest, that would probably be what my profession, if I wasn't an actor, would be, would be to be a professor, a professor of Shakespeare, because it's, it's a huge love of mine. Um, same kind of energy as the cloisters. Um, this is for you. Might not be for you. I've talked to some people that were like, I didn't really get into it. It wasn't really for me. It's very wordy. It, there's a lot of back and forth. There's moments where you get kind of frustrated as a reader, but I think that's the point because everyone's lying. And it's um, fascinating, surprisingly queer. Did not think that this was going to end up being a queer book. Oh my God, it just made me emotional thinking about it. Did not think that this was going to end up being a queer book. It is, and it's so good. Okay. We know her, we love her. Song of Achilles, Madeline Miller, come on. Circe was, Circe was good, but this, or Circe, however you say it, um, this is excellent. It's the song of Achilles and Patroclus and their love story, and you know how it's gonna end, and you still go through it, and it's giving like, I really love the rebirth of um, this, like kind of in the last like five, maybe 10 years, that kind of the rebirth of um, Greek mythology, like the Renaissance of Greek mythology becoming stories, um, mainstream stories again. This is so good. Um, the book is poetry. I don't know. I don't know what came down and possessed Miss Madeline Miller to write be such beautiful queer love and, and poetry, and how much research she must have done to get this book set. But the labor of love is so very apparent in this book. Next one. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. We're back at Shakespeare, kids. Maybe I would have been like a lit professor in another life. Am I just gonna keep answering that one question from a second ago? Um, Hamnet is the story um, of Shakespeare's Hamlet, um, but like in actual real life, it is Shakespeare. It's the story of how Hamlet was written and made, but told through the eyes of Shakespeare's wife. And um, it's just so good. Um, Agnes is, is the mother of Hamnet, and uh, for those of you who don't know, um, it was supposed or maybe has been confirmed <laughs> that Hamlet was written about a son of Shakespeare's named Hamnet who passed away um, from the Black Death, which was a plague, in uh, 1580. And Maggie O'Farrell wrote a beautiful story about a woman who, I don't want to say like was not like other women because that sounds comparative and, and not uplifting to women at all, but this woman that kind of wasn't society's definition of a woman, wild, thought-provoking, you know, spoke her mind. Um, who falls in love with Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, and marries him, and then they lose their child. Um, and the descriptions of what it is like to lose your life, um, and the way that she describes um, Hamnet's passing, which is, you know, it's not a spoiler, it literally says it on the back. Um, and then, Shakespeare goes away to London to write his plays and it I think that the biggest thing that I took away from this book was processing in real time with Agnes um, loss and grief and depression which sounds so not fun to read and I wouldn't say that this was like a, a happy happy joy joy having the time of my life read but it is it was so 
beautiful and gentle and thought-provoking and um, gentle in a way, but also ugly and, and just so good. I wept and I, I know I'm a crier, nothing new here, but this was breathtaking. <laughs> yeah, good shit. All right, Midnight Library. Matt Haig, nothing new. I read this a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, this is so good. It follows a girl named Nora. Um, and I just love any book that's like, there's a library and then magic happens. And it, I mean, come on, it's giving Narnia, it's giving Starless Sea. Um, but Nora Seed is just kind of living a life. Um, she's not very happy she's feeling really miserable um and from what i remember it, she has thoughts of not being here anymore um and through many circumstances which i won't get too into because i don't want to spoil it um for those have, that have not read this book yet um she is transported to the midnight library and in the midnight library there are so many books and each book is what Nora's life would be had she made a different decision so there are so many it's like so many alternate universes many a multiverse of what her life can be and she can open that book and go live in that life and see if that's the life she wants instead of taking uh, instead of ending the life that she currently has but she only has until midnight and time is a little different here um, but the library begins to fall apart as as she begins to run out of time and she learns a lot and it's really beautiful and thought-provoking, very gentle in terms of putting the cookies on the lower shelf um, for those who need language um, surrounding their feelings about where their life is at. Just really, really amazing stuff. Those are my... That, I guess, could be a video in and of itself. <laughs> okay, next one is any dream theater roles. Oh, well, I think I'll just leave it at Jenna for now because I've been really lucky to play some dream roles in the last couple of years, and I... Jenna. Jenna and Waitress. If you could rank all the roles you have been, how would you rank them? That's going to be its own video. Um, my friend Carrie Hope Fletcher just put out one where she ranked them um and i was like this is such a beautiful idea and then i just saw that it's there <laughs> so maybe i'll do my own take on that as well all credit to her uh is there a movie book show etc that has recently left you inspired slash motivated great question um oof. actually Right now, I'm listening to the audiobook of Fairy Tale by Stephen King, and I think that might take the place of one of the five top five books that I've I've read recently. It's so good, um, and it's so masterfully woven. Um, I feel like I'm inside a Brothers Grimm, like a true dark Brothers Grimm fairy tale, um, all for the love of a dog, and it is. It is just so good and I find myself hoping that they like make a movie or a series out of this and then also going, don't touch it. Um, but I'm feeling really inspired by the creativity of the world of fairy tale, um, which there, it's, it's our world and then another world. Um, and that's been really great. I've also been listening to a, um, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast called Worlds Beyond Number. If you're not into Dungeons and Dragons, that's okay. This did not feel like I was listening to Dungeons and Dragons and I like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but the the people that um, that are that do that, if you know D&D, you know Brennan and, and all of these people that are, you know, are in that like Dungeons and Dragons network. Um, and the way in which these people speak to each other and the story building and the interpersonal relationships and the we were friends as children and now we've all grown apart and we're still friends because we grew up together but now we're different people and we have different 
creeds and those are our adult selves are fighting the love of our childhood selves and it's just so good um i listened to it on spotify i've listened to the whole first part i think it's like 13 episodes or something like that it is so good the storytelling the laughter the jokes just felt like i was hanging out with friends and it felt me it left me feeling so inspired how how generous they all were um, with their thought processes and the way that they were building and how helpful they were to each other and how creative they were and the way that their brains were working to solve problems within a scene essentially was just really inspiring as a performer myself so I couldn't recommend that enough worlds beyond number I'll put a link um, oh goodness what is something in your life that brings you ultimate joy? <sighs> something in my life, um, something in life in general is sunlight. Um, I get a lot of sunlight in the room that I'm in right now. And that has been really beautiful to watch the way that light manifests in my room and, and what it does for me being outside, um, especially as we are entering the dark days. Um, but I, I'm not like a summer person at all. Too hot too hot baby um but something in my life that brings me ultimate joy ultimate is a really definitive word um something in my life that brings me ultimate joy um music i know that that seems like a cop-out answer but i'm telling you something's happening um with like my Spotify and the music that's getting suggested to me, I'm just finding these beautiful gems and I, artists that I would never have found if they hadn't been like put in a mix or on my Discover Weekly or you know, whatever it is. I'm just finding so much joy through the artistry and the storytelling of these musicians. Um, and therefore, because I find this one song, I find their whole album and I kind of, it's making me feel like, um, it's making me feel like it's 2006 again and I'm burning CDs for my friends. That's been something that's been bringing me real, real joy is finding that one song that, that fits your rage or that one song that is that beautiful, sweet, melancholy thing that just scratches that itch or the one song that has those perfect stacked harmonies or, you know, that has that bass or that drum that just <coughs> kills. Um, those, that's been my joy. Very simple pleasure. Um, truly ultimate joy. Um, and really long, open-minded, peaceful talks with people. Quality time with the people that matter the most in my life. I'm getting the next one. <laughs> I'm gonna answer one more <laughs> because it made me laugh. Um, and I don't want this video to be so long. I'll save the other ones for another time. Are you in a relationship and with who? <laughs> I am in a relationship, um, very happily so. And I will not say with who. Not because it's a secret, not because, you know, I can't say, but because it's mine and I, and I love my relationship and I love the person I'm in a relationship with. I mean, look at my face the best. I love them. Um, I've never known such gentleness and such tenderness and such stupidity. I've never laughed as much as I do with this person and I'm very grateful for him and you know if my privacy settings change they change but I am in a relationship and happily so and gratefully so and with that I bid thee adieu. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Um, let me know if there's anything that you wanna see, anything else you want me to talk about. I'll save the other questions for another time. Um, yeah, and I am going to steam a little bit and start packing up my bag to head to work soon. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being here. I really hope there were no boogers. Hang on, I just realized my septum piercing was itchy and there might be boogies. And if there are, you're welcome.
you little freak. Okay. Have a beautiful day. I'm grateful for you. Love you, mean it.